The year is 1976, and we find ourselves in Seveso, Italy. Little Tony is playing outside. It's a beautiful day, but Tony doesn't seem to be enjoying himself. For starters, none of his friends can play. All of them have been getting serious rashes and have been feeling sick. Not only that, but the animals and plants seem to be dying. Even Tony isn't feeling all that well. He must have caught the same thing that his friends have. On top of all this, Tony just found out that his family has to move. His parents were talking to men in suits about something called a dioxin pollution and how everyone had to be evacuated. How did this happen? A little ways away from Seveso is the Ikmesa chemical manufacturing plant. Their specialty is the toxic chemical substance known as 2,4,5-trichlorophenol, which is essential in the production of herbicides and cosmetics. Unfortunately, training and morale were subpar, so much so that on July 9, 1976, workers improperly stopped a regular batch reaction for the weekend. The reaction was stopped at a temperature nearly three times hotter than what was protocol. This caused a runoff reaction to take place, the product TCDD, one of the most harmful dioxins. Then, on July 10th, a rupture disc broke and released a large cloud of toxic gas that would drift towards Seveso. Due to a lack of knowledge about dioxins at that time, and poor company communication, it would take five days to confirm the release of dioxins, and another five days before authorities were informed. Finally, on July 24th, two weeks after the incident, officials issued a mandatory evacuation of the town, but it was much too late. 220,000 citizens suffered from the harmful effects of the dioxin. 1,800 hectares of land and livestock were affected, and 700 people were forced out of their homes. Once authorities became involved, cleanup was a huge concern since the natural breakdown of TCDD would require six to eight years. Polluted soil had to be removed and replaced. All crops and livestock had to be exterminated in order to prevent dioxins from entering the food chain. City streets and paths had to be repaved, while houses were vacuumed, washed, and repainted. Even still, 200 houses were left abandoned and eventually demolished. The plant was sealed and demolished. Any debris was buried in two large tunnels with the most heavily contaminated waste later incinerated in Switzerland. Because of the unknown effect of dioxin on pregnancy, the Italian judicial system decided to give women the choice of having an abortion. Abortions were considered illegal in Italy at that time. In the end, 30 women took that offer. Flash forward 40 years later, and Tony has grown up to become an accomplished biomedical researcher. Motivated by the disaster, Tony has made it his life goal to solve the mechanism in which TCDD operates. With diverse symptoms like chloracne, endocrine and reproductive abnormalities, and even cancer, Tony recognized that TCDD must be operating under a complex biochemical reaction. Eureka! Tony has made the first step in unraveling the mystery behind TCDD. He's discovered that TCDD is capable of bioaccumulation in human fat, and when inside the body, it binds with high affinity to the aromatic hydrocarbon receptor. The receptor was found to be a ligand-activated transcription factor, primarily located in the liver. This complex is capable of entering the nucleus and binding to specific dioxin-responsive DNA sites, which eventually alter gene expression, metabolism, cell growth and differentiation, as well as disrupting several signal transduction pathways. Further research is still needed to uncover the exact mechanism of TCDD, as it would help synthesize a better treatment. The most concerning aspect of this disaster was the lack of communication. This disaster caused a reflection at the political, economic, and social conflicts which hindered response. The European Parliament had a long debate, and after, the Seveso Directive was adopted. The first Seveso Directive was adopted in 1982. 
This identified dangerous industrial substances and ensured manufacturers and authorities had safety measures in place, as well as quick communications of information to the public if a disaster were to occur. The second Seveso Directive was passed in 1996. This updated safety policies, increased policing of these regulations, and increased the publicity of safety reports. Recently in 2012, the third Seveso Directive came out, which increased public input on safety regulations and increased the legal capabilities of persons affected by a disaster. Thanks to the Seveso Directives, the number of industrial accidents have been decreasing steadily. Nowadays, Tony likes to spread awareness of ICMISA's negligence in the hopes of preventing future disasters. There are numerous critiques about how ICMISA handled the Seveso accident. First, ICMISA did not have adequate scientific knowledge of the reactions they were carrying out. They did not take into account possible runaway reactions or the hazards of dioxin formation. Furthermore, they altered the original patented reaction without testing for the possible ramifications. Second, ICMISA had knowledge of previous accidents similar to the one that happened at Seveso, but that information was not used to help prevent this disaster. Lastly, ICMISA initially refused to admit to the accident, and it took a full two weeks to begin evacuating citizens out of the most heavily contaminated area. This lack of ownership caused devastating damage to the land, animals, and people of Seveso. Now, in the place of the ICMISA plant, there is a commemorative oak forest park where no construction is permitted. Tony has realized the importance of evidence-based research and the significance of industrial regulations. Hopefully, the lessons of Seveso will help guide our future to a more harmonious relationship between industrial corporations and the environment.